Now, there's two fundamental approaches to this, uh, which I would call complexity theory and, and the study of algorithms. Uh, complexity theorists ask, for a given kind of problem, how much work must be done by any conceivable algorithm? And uh, people who study algorithms focus on one problem at a time and ask, what's the best way to solve this problem using the kind of resources that I expect to have? And they're uh, clearly related, but they're, they tend to uh, require different uh, skills. Uh, sequential versus parallel processing is another uh, Another interesting uh, dichotomy, are there, are there problems that are somehow inherently sequential that have to be uh, solved one step after another that don't need, um, uh, that can't be, uh, can't be solved by highly parallel processing. Um, another area that's come to the fore in the last uh, decade or so is uh, classical versus quantum information. And as we know, uh, as things get smaller and smaller, our uh, everyday common sense ideas about how they work <coughs> have, to have to be replaced by uh, a, a new system called quantum mechanics, which is very, very non-intuitive. And there is a notion of quantum computation. People are trying to build experimental quantum computers. And some problems that are thought to be hard in the normal uh, everyday computational world are actually easy for quantum computers because they can uh, simulate a kind of uh, uh, highly parallel search. Um, so that's a very, still a very active research area. And also uh, another one uh, that uh, has received a lot of study is the, the power of knowing the future. You know, suppose you have a uh, algorithm or a protocol that uh, could look into the future and see the entire set of data that it was going to get, uh, how much better would that perform than an uh, algorithm that didn't have clairvoyance and, and was just forced to respond to uh, data as it came? So a lot of the theoretical computer science questions are, are questions about the value of certain kinds of resources. So let me go on now. Uh, and just briefly talk a little bit about the research of everybody in the area. Uh, my main research is connected with algorithms in number theory and algebra. And this kind of computation is, is at, the, uh, at the root of a lot of the things that we do. Uh, cryptography uses, modern day cryptography uses large prime numbers. Error correcting codes need finite fields. You need both of them to uh, communicate uh, reliably and securely. Uh, computer algebra systems require exact arithmetic. So um, somebody has to think about uh, how arithmetic of polynomials, numbers, rational functions is to be done. Pseudo-random numbers, despite what you might think, are all generated by uh, iterations whose algebra is well understood. Turns out it doesn't work so well to just write down some random program and expect it to generate random numbers. Uh, you have to put a lot of thought into, uh, into doing that. And uh, quantum computation, of course, is uh, uh, reliant on, on these principles, too. So uh, up here, I've listed some of the, some of the math tools that I've uh, had to uh, exploit, sometimes kicking and screaming. Uh, Basically, analytic number theory, geometry, classical analysis, probability theory, things like that. Um, and I've listed a couple of recent projects here. Um, uh, I, I put the last one on here just so I can say the name, uh, German tanks and zombie primes. So the idea there is that um, we want to do prediction of a sequence that's uh, generated by iterating a, a linear function. And that iteration is always done with some modulus, and the uh, first task is to figure out what the modulus is. And uh, in classical statistics, that's called the German tank problem. You see a bunch of serial numbers of things you captured, and you want to figure out you know, how much production was there based on the serial numbers you've seen. So this is an algebraic uh, German tank problem. Uh, zombie primes, uh, we've got a 
I'll show you read the paper. Uh, it's a little hard to explain without a blackboard. Uh, Jay Tsai is a complexity theorist, and lately he has concentrated on combinatorial counting problems. Now, he, these counting problems are at the heart of uh, the study of materials and statistical physics. Uh, you may know that statistical models for uh, highly complex systems, you know, things with a lot of atoms and molecules in them, uh, they involve probabilities. The probabilities all have some denominator. And to evaluate the denominator, it's called the partition function, you've got to get uh, the solution to one of these counting problems. So uh, Jin Yi has been intensely studying uh, what he calls dichotomy theory for counting problems. And what he shows is that for a certain class of counting problems, uh, the problem is either provably easy, there's a polynomial time algorithm where it's really hard, meaning that you need to use uh, polynomial space to solve it. And curiously, for these problems, there's, there's no in-between. Uh, so uh, he's done this for a lot of uh, problems from graph theory, like uh, graph homomorphisms, generalizations of graph homomorphisms where you have complex values, uh, counting the solutions to constraint satisfaction problems, which are like satisfiability and generalizations of that. Um, and uh, he's also working on, on a thing called match gate theory, which is, uh, as I understand it, um, a, a way to get the effects of quantum computation without having quantum information. So, uh, you know, very clever uh, algorithms that rely on, on cancellation and, and uh, parallel evaluation. Sushi Chawla uh, is interested in both uh, approximation algorithms for hard optimization problems. So you may have seen in some class a proof that the traveling salesman problem is NP hard, but Life doesn't stop just because some guy says this problem is NP hard. Generally, you have to try to find an approximate solution because your, you know, your delivery person has to go, has to have a route uh, assigned to go somewhere. So, uh, people study approximation algorithms, and the game is to find algorithms that have provably good behavior. She's also very interested in the new area of algorithmic game theory and computational economics. Uh, so the, the word there is mechanism design. Anytime you have an economic interaction between people, and unless it's uh, you know something really primitive like theft or something, uh, somebody makes the rules for how they how they interact. You know what sets prices. That's called a mechanism. So computer scientists have become interested in mechanism design now, and she's also interested in various kinds of optimization, uh, online optimization. Uh, optimization and stochastic settings and so on. Um, and some recent research problems she's uh, studied include um, algorithm design for settings where the players can be strategic. Uh, some of you may know this idea that in the, the standard best price auction, there, there are ways for the bidders to cheat. So the goal is to design mechanisms for which the players have no incentive to be uh, um, to lie, basically, about what their preferences are. Um, and this kind of thing comes up in a lot of electronic commerce, including uh, uh, selling cloud resources, uh, selling you know, <coughs> sharing, uh, things like that. Uh, she's also, also been recently interested in the problem of trying to learn good algorithms from data. So general, I think generally in machine learning, you, you, uh, you try to infer a model, like a, you know, rule for, you know, this is this is a cat, this is not a cat. And uh, she's interested in trying to take that one step further and use the data to infer uh, not just simple decision rules but algorithms. And then also um, there's the problem that's come to fore recently of algorithmic fairness. How do you design ad options so that the, the ads don't uh, discriminate and you know, pull in the a biased uh, sample of customers or respondents or whatever. Um, Ilias uh, is a um, theorist inter primarily interested in machine learning. And I'd say his, his work is kind of sits in between 
uh, traditional CS machine learning and uh, theoretical and computational statistics. So uh, one, of, one of the kind of problems he works on is uh, statistical tests and procedures for high dimensional data that are robust to uh, bad samples. For example, if you, if you want to use the mean to uh, predict or, or evaluate a population parameter, then um, that algorithm is, is susceptible to an adversary who uh, you know, produces a, a, a huge data point that can, that can influence the mean. So there are, there are ways to design procedures that are uh, immune to that kind of uh, strategic behavior called robust statistics in the literature. Um, he's also interested in adversarial machine learning. Uh, you know, what happens if the data for your machine learning algorithm is not uh, randomly chosen by nature, but uh, is, is uh, uh, chosen by an adversary. Um, and other more uh, classical statistics problems like uh, hypothesis testing, non-parametric estimation, etc. Uh, Dieter is Dieter von Malkabeek is a computational complexity theorist, and his recent research involves uh, derandomization. So, if I have a randomized algorithm and I try to make a deterministic uh, substitute for it, um, uh, how much work must that must that derandomized algorithm do in some sense? And Turns out this is connected to uh, lower bounds and the size of Boolean circuits and the complexity of testing whether uh, polynomials are identical or not. He's also worked a lot on lower bounds for NP hard problems on various kinds of uh, Turing machines. Um, and there, there is this embarrassing fact that uh, we don't have any nonlinear lower bounds for any NP complete problem. But we do have nonlinear lower bounds when, uh, say, the space of the machine, you know, it's supposed to run in polynomial time, the space, of, space for the machine is limited or something like that. So he's got a number of really nice results in that character. Um, he's also worked on lower bounds for uh, compression and kernelization. Kernelization is the idea of taking a big problem, replacing it by a smaller problem, solving a smaller problem, and then uh, blowing out the answer to the big problem. Christos, uh, Christos Samos, um, he's interested in uh, learning theory, computational statistics, also uh, computational economics, uh, mechanism design, I told you what that is. Algorithmic game theory is uh, game theory with uh, computation resource constraints on the players. So in traditional game theory, you assume that the uh, players are computationally unbounded, they can uh, realize any strategy that they can uh, that, that can be specified mathematically, but in the real world they have to think up their moves, and that makes the study of game theory uh, more interesting. So he's in, he works on that, and also uh, algorithm design, fine grained complexity. So some specific questions uh, uh, he gave me here were. How do you improve machine learning algorithms so that they can handle noisy data or, or more seriously biased data? Um, and what are optimal selling mechanisms for selling sets of items? Uh, and how much worse is it to uh, sell the set than to uh, price the items separately? So this is the, the problem of you know, somebody who Let's say they've inherited a set of mechanics tools from their grandfather, and they, you know, they don't want to keep them all, they want to sell them. Do they uh, say, okay, you can have the whole business here for 5000 bucks, or you can buy each and every one of these little ones for uh, $5 each, which is, which is better. And if you do individual selling, of course, there's a, there's a lot more effort. Uh, you're, you're also more likely to get results. Uh, you uh, sell everything at once. Uh, it's kind of a hit or miss. You, you need to find a customer who you know, really needs all that stuff at the same time. And finally, um, how might you speed up an algorithm or you know, make it perform better uh, using, using data on, on typical instances? And so this is a more refined version of uh, 
average case analysis where we try to tune the algorithm not to some mathematically ideal uh, random inputs, but for inputs that are, that are characteristic of the data that occurs in practice. Okay, thanks.